The Pythagorean theorem is a, uh, a rule that was invented or, or found by a man named Pythagoras who lived uh, quite a while ago. So actually what, what you're using is the foundation for a lot of architecture and a lot of uh, math and uh, building that has been done in the past uh, two to three thousand years. Um, so, and, and actually there's evidence that um, while they didn't use something called the Pythagorean Theorem, as far back as the Babylonians uh, or the Chaldean race, um, they were using uh, a, a rudimentary version or a, an early version of this theorem that we're going to study today. So that goes about 6,000 years ago. Um, so uh, really, really uh, old, uh, well-tested theorem here. Um, so what, what it basically says is this. Pythagoras was a Greek philosopher and a mathematician. You hear a lot about the Greeks in math. Um, but he studied triangles and their relationships with the sides. So one of the things he noticed here is that if they take the two legs of a, tri of a right triangle, and one thing you need to know right off the bat, this is for right triangles only. It doesn't work for acute, doesn't work for obtuse. It is actually a really good test to see if you have a 90 degree angle uh, in an object, uh, which is something you'll explore a little bit later uh, within this, uh, within this uh, folder here. Um, if you take the two legs, which are the two sides that form the 90 degree angle, if I square them and I add those up, it's the same as if I square the hypotenuse or the longest side. So take a minute uh, in your notes, maybe pause the video and jot this little diagram down. Uh, leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared, or you might have seen this as, or uh, you, you will hear this often referred to as a squared plus b squared equals c squared, but that's not very useful if you don't know what a and b stand for. a and b are the legs, so if you square the legs and add them, it equals the hypotenuse. Let's take a look at, uh, at what that means. See that the 3, 4, 5 triangle right there. Um, what I've done on the next slide here is I've taken that and I've kind of redrawn that on its side. Well, if I take this and I square the sides, so if I do 3 squared, I notice I take 3 and square it, uh, that gives me 9. If I take 4 squared, that gives me 16. Now, when I add these two squares together, they should equal the same thing as taking this, this third side, x, and squaring that. So I'm going to take 4 squared and move it over here to the hypotenuse. And notice there's a little bit of space left. So again, uh, just what I'm doing here, keep in mind, I'm going to take 4, and I've squared that, and that's 16. I've taken 3, and I've squared that, and that's 9. So I have 16 squares from the, from the one leg, 9 squares from the other leg, and I'm going to put them together and see what we end up with here. So for 3 squared, what I'm going to do is I'm going to ungroup these things, and I'm going to see uh, what happens... When I put them back together, uh, I kind of fill in the gaps here around these yellow squares to try and make a complete square. So I'll take these two and rotate them and stick them on top here. I'm going to take these three and again I'll rotate them to line up. I'll put that along the side. Next two, rotate them, put them along the side. And then the last two, notice there's a gap there for the last two squares. So notice what I've done here. Uh, I have proved that if I take uh, 4 squared, which is 16, and 3 squared, which is 9, I get 25 squares, which is the same thing as 5 squared. So what I've shown is that that hypotenuse is 5. In other words, uh, 3 squared plus 4 squared equals 5 squared. That's the Pythagorean theorem. So I've used that to find the length of the hypotenuse. I've proved that that side length has to be 5. So let's take a look at how we, uh, we put this into practice. You don't have to draw out all the squares. We're going to use algebra. Um, so remember, we're using the formula a squared plus b squared equals c squared. What you need to do first is identify what you're solving for. Because that's going to determine whether a number on the left or a letter on the, there's the letter on the left or the letter on the right. Since I'm I'm solving for hypotenuse here, uh, C or my hypotenuse is going to be all alone. 
And now, all I have to do is square all my numbers and add them together, and there's going to be one step at the end here. So when I, my next step is always going to be square everything that I can, get rid of those exponents if I can. So 16 squared plus 5 squared or is 25, and that still equals c squared. I've got to leave c squared alone because I can't get rid of that squared yet. 16 plus 25 is 41. So I have 41 equals c squared. Now c is not yet by itself. Remember that c squared is c times c, which is not 2c. c times c is c squared. So what would uh, 1c equal? Well, to do that, I have to do the opposite operation here. What's well, the opposite of squaring something? Well, remember, that's square root. That's from chapter 3. The square root of c squared is c. What I do to one side, I have to do the other. So I'm going to do the square root of 41 to figure out what c equals. So I'll type 41 into my calculator. Um, you might need a little help from me if you don't know where your square root key is. I can show you that uh, in class. Square root of 41, I'm going to round to the nearest tenth and get 6.4 units. Alright, on the next one you'll notice uh, we're solving for the unknown side in the right triangle. These are all right triangles. Since it's a side, I'm solving for one of the legs, so I'm going to either leave A or B blank. I'll fill in 7. 7 is my other leg for the other variable. So I'll go 7 squared plus B squared equals 25 squared. Again, remember the next step is always square everything you can. So I'll square 7 squared and get 49. It's 49 plus b squared equals 625. That's what 25 times 25 is. Now, I've got to get b by itself, so for that I've got to combine my like terms of 49 and 625. That means getting 49 off the left by subtracting it. Do the same to the other side. b squared equals, do some subtraction here, I'm going to end up with 576 when I subtract this all out. And then again, I have to take the square root of b, uh, of b squared to get b. Square root of 576, probably don't know that off the top of your head. Uh, so 576 square root is 24. So my uh, leg there on the side is 24 units long. That's, that's the very basics. I want to get into a little bit of application here. So uh, again, this could be used for a number of different things. Um, the next one is just a kind of a silly example here. Um, so after his morning jog, I'm leaning against my car trying not to pass out. If I'm six feet tall and my feet are two feet from the car, how far is my head from the ground? Um, the first thing here is that I'm leaning. That seems silly, but it's what I'm doing, and it's going to make my head less distance from the ground than my six feet height. So I uh, draw a little picture here just to kind of show you how the Pythagorean theorem gets in, comes into play. So if this is my car, don't laugh at me. I'm not an artist. Uh, and I'm leaning against it. First thing it says is that my feet are two feet from the car. So that's along the ground. The, the distance along the ground is two feet. Now my height is actually like the slant height here uh, of the side of the triangle. That's six feet. And you'll notice then the third side of my right triangle here is x. That's my head's distance from the ground. Uh, so if I kind of, uh, I'm going to ungroup this and, and pull my body away, pull the car away so you can see the triangle a little bit better. And once those objects are all gone, it becomes very clear. Notice 6 represents my body length. 2 is the distance of my feet from the side. x is a leg. So I can do x squared plus 2 squared equals 6 squared. And once that's set up, all you have to do is square everything. So I get x squared plus 4 equals 36. I'll subtract 4 from both sides. So I can start to get x by itself. So x squared equals 32. Square root of x squared is x. So x equals square root of 32. I'm going to need a calculator for that. 5.7 feet. Make sure you're rounding correctly. So my head is 5.7 feet from the ground. 
let's combine this with a, a topic we've learned before, and that's the area of triangles. If I want to find the area of this triangle, remember that's, that's base times height divided by 2. Let's write that over here. Well, I can figure out my base. I have these two fours here on either side of the dotted line. So that means my base is going to be 4 plus 4, which is 8. The problem here is that you don't know my height. It's that height A. So I've got to figure out what to plug in here. Uh, so I've got to go over here. I'm going to use the Pythagorean theorem to figure out the height. Notice that A is part of this triangle. If I have uh, within the triangle, I have two right triangles. Because that, that line down the center for the height is forming two, two equal triangles, two congruent triangles. So I have a squared plus 4 squared equals 6 squared. I'm solving for one of the legs. I know the hypotenuse. I know the, the base of this triangle is 4, part of the overall base of 8. So a squared plus 16 equals 36. Subtract 16 from both sides. And you get a squared equals 20. We'll take the square root of both sides. Square root of 20. Again, calculator. I'm going to round that to 4.5, 4 and a half. And now I'm not done, because remember the question said, the question said, what is the area? So I've got to come back over here. I'm going to erase this question mark, and I'm going to plug in 4.5. And now I'm ready to, to plug this in. Uh, 8 times 4 and a half gives me 36. So my area equals 36 divided by 2. So my area is 18 units squared. Before I knew that, I had to knew my, know my height, though. So... Uh, you have some problems to try now that you, you've watched this video. Um, make sure that you're careful to, to square and not multiply by 2. It's a common mistake, remember, with exponents. So do the problems that follow, uh, turn them into me, and then uh, you'll be ready to move on.